I mean, you know, it's it's actually hilarious because if you if you talk to some top players and like you just say, why did you choose this? They just straight up say, I don't know. I felt I felt it. I, I yeah. felt that it was gonna work in the moment. And sometimes it's bullshit, but other times it's actually legit because they just understand how people usually behave in those Dude, situations. I've, I've played I've played against Leo like in sub games and stuff. And I, I straight up asked him, how did you know I was about to do that? I didn't know I was about mm -hmm. to do that. I was mashing, dude. How did you how did you read my option? He was like, I don't know. Just happened. I, the bet, the, I, I, a big reason why I look at the game is the way I look at it is because I, I'm from New England. And you know what matchup I got to watch all the time? Light versus Mars. All mm -hmm. the time. That game, those two play the game literally at mul a multiplayer of 10 times. Like 10 times. The game is significantly faster. It looks like they're mashing the entire time. They are not. They are looking for they are looking for specific behavior patterns and they're setting it up by putting out a lot of constant hitboxes. And Mars actually is just straight up predicting most of the time. In this First matchup, Smasher, dude. It, no, like, <laughs> I, I remember. I remember this was like a hotly contested thing in the Smashing for a while. People were talking about like how how you need a super high reaction time to be a top player. And then it came out that Mars has like below average reaction time. He's not reacting. He's just straight up being better than you and outplaying by, like outplaying by predicting the future straight up. Yeah, he conditions consistently and also that is bad. Don't do that against Corey. <laughs> because it, remember I was talking a second ago about how PK Chris has to be careful with his offstage play where he usually puts PK flashes out. Webb knows how to deal with that. So that's what he did. He forced them to go low in a situation where he was forced to take that counter head on. And he did get caught on that, uh, on that counter. He is going to die from that. Now going into this next stock, PK Chris has already a whole lot of work to do. He's got mm -hmm. significant distance to make up uh, with just this. And I don't think Webb is going to give him the mileage he needs. Yeah, and something that actually... Oh, there you go. That was good. He okay, forced, yeah, the, he's getting forced that high recovery by putting out that PK Thunder. Uh, it, it's something I'm actually somewhat surprised by is we ended up on a small stage. I didn't think that that was going to happen, but maybe that's why it took so long for them to get the match started. There was a pretty contested thought process on do I go wide do or do I just choose the box with them? And I actually like it for PK Chris, even though he's behind. It makes it significantly easier to stay right next to the web at all times. And the disjoint, even though it's really good keeping him out, it's not going to be as hard to get back in. Right now, PK Chris is, is doing a lot better than Debo did, especially in that situation that you just mentioned. He is going to get caught by that, that little, little, little down smash. He's going to air dodge back to stage, though, and you know know that WebJP was getting ready to hop off stage and go for that counter because that's basically one of his biggest win cons in this matchup. Here it comes. Oh no, he's going for the quick pin instead. And look at what Web's doing. He Before, he didn't even do anything at ledge. He waited for the jump to center stage because he's just kind of tapping forward to bait a reaction. And that time, he just goes ahead and holds forward, catches him with the side B insta pin, takes out that stock. Going for that side B off stage, and PK Chris wants this stock. He wants it soon because if he lets this start to build up like that momentum, Webb is is one player you do not want to give too big of a lead. He doesn't let go of it once it's in his hands. PK Chris needs to take this out now. This back throw should bring it close, but it's not quite going to be able to close it out. That oh, good job holding up to the jump. Yeah, I was about to say holding on to that double jump that saved his life there. Absolutely, that is a crucial part of your the jumping is not. Not good there. Even if you uh, jumped instead of instant pin, you were gonna die to to get called up by that back here. But jumping is the it, it is the go-to defensive option. It's the best defensive option in the game. So when you lose that resource, you're screwed. You have to know how to hold it off stage well, especially against characters like Ness, who can put out a lot of PK thunder pressure and just wipe that stock clean. He's going to come right back there. To he stage. just upbeat instantly Whoa. instead of jumping. I love that dare to put on shield pressure though. It's so good from Webb and he's he's been mixing up how he comes back to the stage so much. Uh, this is scary. The insta pin comes out, but it doesn't quite kill. And then he's going to get caught up in the chainsaw, go down to it. So that F smash going to close it out and Webb. Puts himself one step closer to taking on 17 and losing time. I like the mix up there too because I think even PK Chris has got to respect the fact he got caught by that there. Every single time he's been at ledge, what the web do, he went for insta pins or he went for a really quick reactive play to try and catch a two frame. So what does he do instead? You try to maybe neutral get up to get past that two frame attempt because you're trying to out time it. And then you walk straight into a multi-hit move that's gonna kill you. That that was that was good conditioning and ledge trapping from Webb. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna work as much throughout the set now that he's revealed it. Maybe he uses it on a roll read instead, but that's that's really good. 
Also, I, I'm, I'm really f happy that everybody's happy in chat. Like, I, I know that, yeah, the game can be toxic. The game can be annoying, but we're just vibing. We're, I'm we're, toxic. Oh, we're, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, don't, 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 don't test me. I will throw your small ass when I find you uh, in a one day. <laughs> Dude, that's already, that's already like the running joke. Like uh, as soon as I walk into the venue, it like, you know, let's make the next, let's make moves. Like Skip uh -huh. is just going to fucking haymaker me. <laughs> that's actually going to be funny. <laughs> no, honestly, we're, we all just have a good time. We just chill. Um, and we're, the big thing is just have fun. At the end of the day, if you're not enjoying, well, I'm not talking to you now. I'm talking to chat. And I'm talking to YouTube comments. If you're if you're playing a game and you're aggravated and you're mad, why are you playing? If you're not having fun, why why, why aren't you? Why are you playing? If you're consistently putting yourself through pain, why are you playing? You need to enjoy yourself. You need to be like these two, where they're playing really well. They're consistently practicing on a constant basis. And yeah, the game can get frustrating, but you need to be able to smile at the end of the day and just laugh off the thing that was annoying because otherwise you're never going to learn and you're constantly just gonna be that guy who's complaining in chat, just acting like you're no better than everybody else, not getting the Ws. I don't wanna see that. I wanna see everybody try. Yeah, and here's the, here's the thing, like this is my number one tip for practice. Like, don't all be in center practice. stage like that. Don't be in center stage. That's my number two tip, though. My number one tip is the second you tilt, stop practicing. Stop playing. Go do something else. If you let yourself keep going while you're tilted, you're just going to keep making more mistakes. You're just going to keep getting more and more tilted, and that's how you build bad habits. Just stop immediately. That's why I'm, oh. that's why I'm very happy something. that people like Wadi are succeeding on, uh, on stream. He's very positive mindset and a great guy who just gets the like constantly be a goof and I, I love watching every time he puts that hand out for the hand thing. Uh these two? Dude, I'm not gonna lie. They, this, this is hard to smile at with how close these matches are right now. <laughs> Web, I, I, oh I, I, you I, got I, caught! That was he did not. He did not. He did not. Ajax, I my man, I love that move. I, I like neutral air as well. That's really good on jumps. I love charge neutral B from Corrin so much. I use it way too much whenever I'm screwing around with his character. And that is a great way to mix somebody up. Speaking of good mix up, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna read the way in. Oh, he held out on the DI. He's so lucky that he got out of there in time. Web is looking dangerously close to death. Oh, he wanted that up there there. He just delayed a little bit too long on it. So he's, Web is going to live to see another day. But I don't know how long that day is going to be lasting. This might be like a summer solstice type beat where it's a little bit shorter than he would have liked as he gets caught by that back throw. Goes down into the blast zone and now it's looking like the reversal of the previous game. PK Chris is now the one with that full stock lead. Oh, yeah. Oh, good job waiting there as well. Oh, he catches him again. He's going to wait for him. Yes, this? I knew it. I knew Whoa. it. I Remember when I said Debo didn't go for it before and I expected it? PK Chris will absolutely do that to bait out a bad air dodge. And if you don't do it, you die. So PK Chris is doing what I was hoping he would do before in the last game. Pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. You need to make it so uh, Corrin can't get airborne and consistently space you out. He is doing a good job of boxing with Web right now. Boxing is, is exactly what you need to do. Like, that's that's where a lot of sorties just die, right? Is when you just ignore their disjoint, get in close, and start outboxing them. You get Chris whipping a potential game-winning punish there. He doesn't quite get it, but, you know. Speaking of whipping game-winning punish, that was a back throw right there. He ended up half tilting because he was maybe afraid of a shield. But either way, he's still in a good spot. He's got a whole stock up, and Webb is going to follow him off stage. He actually catches the mix. He actually mixes him up by jumping ahead. Oh, I am so surprised. That Webb is still Why alive. Is Webb alive? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is both, going of us, on. <laughs> both of us had that same thought. Why is Webb not dead yet? And I think PK Chris is asking himself the exact same thing because there were four times in a row he should have died there, and he's gonna get hit by Dash Tech. He's still alive. Webb is two percent off full rage and has the potential to do something real scary here. He is going to get the chainsaw to take out that stock, and now we go into a last stock situation. Webb has. A lot of a lot of stuff to do here. He's yeah, got I mean, we so much we... so much space to make up, and he can do it. No, he can't. He can no longer do it. Yes, no, he can. No, he's still got he's the DI. He's still staying alive. That we saw it in the last match versus Debo. He was able to get it to a winnable position. He ended up just missing out. Uh, actually, excuse me. Debo ended up uh, closing it out in, in that game number three. Oh, 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 oh my God! What are you doing? He tried so hard. He tried so hard to bait out that. No, no, it's actually smart because in that position, what do you expect? You're gonna get thrown, right? So what does he do? He tries to walk forward, maybe to bait something out and catch a jump. Now you're at a point though where you kind of just need to 
just do it. Like, like reading a little bit too hard, you have 39%. You just need to go up and catch a solid punish like that. That was on Webb for throwing out that forward smash and getting on there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know how much I agree with that there, like of calling that a smart play because that that could have and should have been a kill P by PK Curse. Like, sure, oh, part? if that was if that was uh, the the situation on Shield where he just kind of turned around and waited, right? Um, that oh, we that talk, we talk about that jump uh, that jump call out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that okay, so... could have and should have been a kill. He could have just gone for the grab. He could have honestly gone for F tilt and would have killed. Could have, like, should have, but that that, that I think jump call out, that jump call out's great at lower percents, right? But when Web is at one seventy seven and anything will kill, you don't need to go for the fancy jump calls. Just just kill him. Here, here's the thing, though, right? Like when you're in a situation like that, sometimes the predictable is a little bit too reckless because if you end up if you're in a spot where it looks like you're gonna get grabbed, right? What's Webb most likely gonna do? He's gonna be on the move. So you anticipate that they're probably going to react defensively according to a throw. So he stutters forward. He makes it look like he might be trying to set up a throw, try and like get him to spot dodge or something. And then he goes for the back air. Sure, it's a bit too far and it didn't work out, but it, I, I like the idea behind it because Webb, especially against Debo, consistently was jumping in that position. He got caught by the run-up up smash multiple times due to it. So maybe a run-up up smash instead might have been a little bit better there. But I, I, I don't necessarily think that that was a terrible play because it a lot of times when you're in a spot where the obvious is really, it, it's just glaring, they're going to spot dodge. And if and you don't get that throw, then you end up losing the game. I, I, I agree with you, right? Like, I, I wasn't saying it was a dumb play, right? I was just saying, like, he might have been able to do something I think it was just better. some logic behind and it. it. That's the, all. The, the, biggest, the biggest thing is that at the in, in the end of the day, or sorry, at the end of the day, I, I need to not mess up my, my sayings because chat will tear me apart for that. Um, he, he still won the game. Like, it's not like he, he oh, true, threw true because he missed that. Like, he, he won, enough. and at the end of the day, that's the thing that matters, is that you put the W on the board. Yeah, it's just, it's, uh, like, a big thing with as you progress, especially when you play against somebody very often, is you want to delete the flow chart. You don't want somebody to look so deep into what is the obvious that, that, that your mix-ups don't work later, because if you do something three times in a row, guess what? It's not a mix-up anymore, right? So, like, it, he's, he did a hell of a job because this matchup looked relatively undoable when Webb was fighting against Debo, and PK Chris has been able to consistently hold the lead now with his last two games. He's playing more reactive, see right there? He looked, and that time Webb got out of there with the right choice, but instead of going for the throw, he decided to run up and attempt that up throw, uh, that up smash attempt. But I think because he saw it so many times from Debo, <laughs> Webb preemptively rolled out of there. He is going to be, oh, okay. That was, that was like a weirdly high pressure situation where just nothing happened. Um, they just ended up rolling and resetting the neutral, and now Webb's looking for his avenue back into the advantage state, but he can't quite find it until he gets that pin, and <laughs> down goes PK Chris. Sometimes you just gotta do it. Just throw that uh, throw that side B out there. It's really quick. It gets in, and if they have to get caught, catch that W. And that up smash, also, I like the fact that PK Chris is using it a bit more. It worked well for, it worked wonders for Debo. Uh, and good job covering himself on the way back in with that up, that up air, because if he did it, he would actually have been stuck in a ledge trap. Yeah, and now Webb has the opportunity to, to take this away, take it back to where he wanted. We're seeing these small stages work out real, real well for him. PK Chris did well on PS2, and on Smashville, it's just kind of been Web City. Uh, oh, but he is going to get caught by that PK Flash in the up air there. Now 54%, we're back to almost even. Never mind, I'm eating my words here thanks to PK Chris. Yeah, all with, PK Chris is one of those nests that can just take one hit for so long. Oh, no. <laughs> that was another situation where PK Thunder makes you want to preemptively attempt attack. You think you're going to get stage spiked. But because he ended up catching him instead, he ends up getting the air dodge down. So that was a really good assisted suicide uh, right there. Now, what does he do about this situation here? He's consistently catching him on the platform, right, with that neutral B. I think Webb's starting to catch on to that. What do you think is in the mind of Webb in a way to punish that now that he realizes he's consistently neutral being underneath him at the, at the platform? Well, uh, the first thing is probably in Webb's mind when he's when he's stuck on platform there is oh god, oh god, oh god, oh no. But the second <laughs> thing is that it, he needs to get he needs to get his positioning better in this situation. 
Um, he needs to, because the, the big thing that PK Chris has been doing, and it, it's just what Ness do, is, oh, Webb messed that up. I know he wanted the runoff and he got the down beat too early. Mm -hmm. Um, is that, that Webb needs to get around the hitboxes, and that's something that he started to struggle to do recently. Like, that's what he was doing really well in game one. And then PK Chris just started saying, no thanks, I'm good. I like what PK Chris did right there too. After realizing, it's like, okay, he's probably gonna be super aggro after getting pushed away like that. He thinks I'm gonna do something. He's covering him. That that should be a little bit um, ill-advised. Don't really have a lot of logic behind that one, but he, he ends up getting forced at the ledge. Up throw shouldn't do it yet. Yeah, that, that's why he was mashing right there. He's trying to get uh, get a little bit more damage on him. But good job of PK Chris also not taking the throw. Now he's gonna get the grab into the up throw. It's still not going to kill those thanks to some either some great DI from PK Chris or just corn throws are all yeah, bad. It's, and it's significantly look at weaker delay. than it used look to be. Look at this delay. PK Chris spending an eternity off stage only to just finally die. Yeah, that, was a, that was a delay for sure. <laughs> a little bit no, longer than he's sick. I mean, don't get me wrong, he was probably just trying to dodge uh, an attempted counter, like he's trying to wait. But, I mean, hey, sometimes the fear just sets in and it works out for you. Now, Webb is starting to consistently catch him on landings. He's doing better at the ledge. I like the behavior of holding shield at the ledge because he's assuming something aggro would happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, Chris is kind of, almost kind of putting himself into repeated bad positions right now. Oh, okay, that was looking like it might have been another assisted suicide, as you do love to call them. But he did make it back to stage, and now he's in a position where he's setting himself up for success. He gets the down tilt up air, and that's gonna kill! I, you know, I spoke it into existence. I manifested it right there. I said setting himself up for success. He immediately gets that deep tilt up air and closes out the game, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Tell you, man, Corrin is Corrin has a couple of capable situations. Down tilt to up air, especially on a platform, is still very solid. Especially because of the fact that he just he just empty jumped at him. He jumped towards the platform, which baited out a bad defensive option. Because what do you expect to happen? You're probably gonna get caught. So good job from Webb somehow getting that game because I thought that that was going to I thought that that game was going to peak at Chris the way that it started. But it's at the end of the day when you end up being pressured into a situation that kind of scares you with that uh which is kind of staring them down off stage with that counter it could get you it could get you tilted it's like oh i didn't deserve to lose that stock i i, I looked too hard i ended up sd'ing because of it and now it, it you know he's starting to bring this game back so i still i still feel pretty good for freaky chris's chances but after that game with webb taking the w there Webb now gets the trade and play a bit more frantically up close because he has a game up on PK Chris and Chris can't afford to play as recklessly as before where he was pressing him like really well to the corner. And that's that's the big thing here is especially with Webb on series point, PK Chris kind of can't afford to make any more of these big mistakes. I don't mm -hmm. doubt that like that's probably not at the forefront of his mind, right? He's uh mm -hmm. Uh, trying probably you know he wants to go to losers finals he wants to take on 17 he wants to get that rematch versus sharp up in grand web taking it or sorry pika chris taking him to battlefield here not what i expected after that dominant victory on ps2 earlier from pk chris i'm gonna guess it was banned but i would have thought that pk chris probably would have wanted to go to another long ish stage like maybe town yeah, I think it, I think Chris just um, he, he's he's going with the same game plan. He wants the box. He wants to be up close, right? And also PK Chris is really good on battlefield, so that could be part of it. But also, it is a disjoint on battlefield. Fighting disjointed characters as Ness on battlefield can be a struggle, as we're seeing right now, because those platforms get covered literally by a short hop up there or a, a fade in uh, forward air. So it makes it difficult. PK Chris, he ha he has to capitalize big. Otherwise, he's going to have a significantly harder time getting in on web, and this is playing exactly out like you were just saying, where you expect him to get a wider stage. I get the comfort pick, but so far, web is making this map, this stage look bad. And it is just occurring to me, thanks to chat, that this is more Corrin than I've seen in like the last like year of quarantine smash since Cosmos <laughs> retired. Man, it's it's been a been a bit of a drought for us us Dragon fans. Now Webb taking the first stock with that up air, and that's another thing where I question the stage choice quite a oh. bit. Oh, down he goes. Good job catching up. Also, now, now I think about it, I'm pretty surprised that after that direct, with the way that, you know, 
Hey, Sakurai was talking about that statue of Pyra that, you know, with Corrin not necessarily wearing no shoes, that she ain't get a buff. But, you know, that's just <laughs> a little bit interesting thing that I noticed that went on there. But, hey, uh, PK Chris so not going to be favorites. <laughs> hey, man, look, he said it. This is all on camera. We saw it. So... The fact that PK yeah, Chris, the, the thing that I'm saying here is that Battlefield's. I'm, I'm trying to get us back on track, AJ. Battlefield's <laughs> a, a good, good stage for Corn because that up, up, or sorry, up air kills so goddamn early in a lot of these situations. So yeah. like being able to use that here, like even though he's down by like 52 percent now, even going higher, it's still a situation where he could very quickly bring this back. He gets just one good conversion to that up air off top platform. See, that's my great equalizer, guys. I'll give you analysis all night, and then I'll just drop one of those on you just to make sure you're still awake. So here in this in this game number four, um, I agree with all your points you uh -oh. said. And oh, that's unfortunate. He's lucky that he did not get reverse edge guarded there because that is a very weird position if you get hit to get put back. So well done on avoiding that. But now you're ledge trapped again. And oh, I definitely do, I, I do not think he went, was going for that dash attack intentionally. That just gave him bad positioning. However, somehow he made it back over there and he falls out on the fourth smash and PK Chris gets another Bardo time stock. He's still around. He's gonna bounce off the stage, go back up to it. And honestly, I'm so surprised PK Chris is still alive. Web is missing out on a few opportunities here. That would be real here. I don't think anyone has ever purposely done core and dash attack. Like, that's just, that's how you know they miss input there. Uh, and now getting into this, so, oh, final stock. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was going to kill until I actually saw the scores pop up. Because now Web has the opportunity very, very near, very, very close to just end this set. Web is, or sorry, uh, PK Chris is having a lot of trouble, especially at the ledge. You've been seeing he's just getting ledge trapped for like hours on end uh, yeah. by, by Web, and that's just a problem he needs to figure out a way around. Even if he manages to take this game, he's going to have to go on to Web's counter pick too for the final game. Yeah, and that was a big opportunity drop for Web too because of the fact that he didn't get that extra, he couldn't get the extra damage and get the trades where he needed him while he was off on PK Chris. Now PK Chris gets it back down to one stock apiece and now Chris is not as afraid to be able to swing like that because that's also, oh my God! <laughs> No way on on this earth or any other that work. Why, Ajax? That's I love a, it. That's a, that's a one handshake it. moment. That's PK Chris it, just putting his hand up to the camera going, shake it. I love shake every single hand. time people do reckless shit like that. You just catching someone on the getup. You're not expecting that whatsoever. And PK Chris dominantly gets himself into game number five with that play that is a way to tilt someone that's a way to get in someone's head and that's a way to get a controller thrown across the room but web still played really good that game web played very hey. solid he just missed a few times where he dropped a couple of punish scenarios i'm very curious to see how this next game goes after that honestly like going into game five now that's like that's that's so much mental damage i'm so that's I, I, like Rip what do you, what do you users, do, by the way? I'm what so sorry. You, I screamed so loud on that one. <laughs> what, did, what, did you, what do you do after you get hit by that? Like, you just, you, you just, you know, you shake their hand and you say, GG's go next. Like, you can't dwell on that or you're ruined. That's a big fact. You better put that one in your back pocket. Otherwise, you're going to be real upset when they run Repressive that fade in the next it. game. You better be ready because they're coming and swinging. Let your therapist deal with it later, but you can't think about it now, bro. Bags. <laughs> like for real sometimes and that's also good too because you need to occasionally pull out a big play like that because pk chris hasn't gone for that all day he, uh, i mean that whole set so what do you do you just rip that one out you make it so now webb has to second guess himself at the ledge a lot and that is a really good way to keep it, uh get himself back in granted he's getting kind of cooked right now and webb is doing exactly what he needs to do it's, it's, but webb it's is doing it again. simply I don't, why know why why right I, I don't know why on earth PK Chris let, let him take this to Smashville. I'm going to bet he probably banned Kalos and FD just to keep those blast stages away from Web, which, you know, is what you want to do. But after both of your losses so far in this set have been on Smashville, maybe you want to consider not letting him go here. Yeah, I think maybe. he just felt really... He prob I, I think it's a big part of what you said. He probably does not want those wider stages. He's way more content to fight on the smaller stages here. And that... It is a detriment to him right now because this is where he did lose those last few games. I still feel good for PK Chris in terms of how he played that last one. I like that attempt at the neutral B to call out a jump, but he didn't get anything there. 
and he's putting out some he's doing a good job of trying to cover at the ledge but web's not falling for it now remember what i said before where uh, pk chris in game one kept swinging with anticipation of approach and web eats that up he's doing it again he's not pressuring him the same way with purpose he's more swinging to call out movement from from web and that is how you lose against web in the long run right he made he made some big adaptations earlier in the set he stopped doing exactly what you said but now that now that the pressure's on he's kind of that's always what happens like once the pressure really starts happening you revert to your old habits you go back to the same old song and dance and that's a huge detriment to pk chris here he needs to be really careful that he does that doesn't just slip into habits that web is all too used to punishing yeah, if he can't if he can't adjust around that, he needs his punish game to be really good. He needs to capitalize on every time Webb makes a mistake. Right now it's Webb doing that though. Webb is capitalizing consistently on every single uh, mistake that he makes. He didn't catch him with that uh, dash attack there. Off throw will not do it. I am very curious behind that. Figure back throw would kill at that point. But now he's forced off stage. He's gonna have to jump here. What's the option? And he covers it. The option he is knew dying. It. That's it. That's the option. <laughs> Finally catches himself in off air, so he finally dies as well. But this is exactly how I said last time. When I said with Debo in that last game, you literally need, you you need to just body him. You you need to have one of those stocks like you did to beat that last game. You have to get yourself a dominant stock here. Refuse to take too much damage, but he's not doing so. That's an air dodge down. He doesn't cover it with the episode. But look at the way that Webb is keeping himself safe, and he's consistently pressuring him. And this is looking just ever so ever so fleeting victory chances for uh pika chris right now we've seen stranger things here on the 2gg stream man we've seen people just like from the depths of defeat just rise again like the goddamn phoenix looking less and less likely like you said for pk chris here but it's still definitely possible like I'm, I'm not counting him out until the announcer says game until that green text pops up on my screen True so enough, I've, I've he's learned. got a chance here <laughs> Learned over many years of doing this. Don't ever, don't ever count out the game. Oh, oh you, oh, you, are wild. Man, oh. man, you okay, so you man. went high enough to still make it back. However, that's his jump. He, oh, he attacked. He, oh, oh, he did it. He did. He didn't even care. He, I don't even know if that was an intentional hit off the wall that's to take one. that and do the downer anyways. But good mental awareness from Webb to just go after him anyways with the downer. My God. Hey, Jax, that's going on the MetaView app, bro. That's Yo, going right set, on there. This whole set is. A